Hey, what's up guys? Today I want to talk about how to run a volume of leads with nighttime interactions. All right. So I'm a big fan of doing shorter sets. On my last video, I talked about how if you're doing a thousand leads in a year, okay, I use the metric of getting about 25 leads in a week, which comes out to over a hundred a month, which comes out to over a thousand a year. Now, if you're doing really long sets in a nightclub, like I, have, I even have advanced friends that do this. If you're doing like one hour, two hour long sets, you don't know if that girl will even meet up later. You don't know if something will come up and, and blow the whole thing out and fuck up the pull. There's a whole bunch of variables, okay? So I like to kind of like spread out all my options and just move from set to set to set. Um, I've said in other videos, you should be aiming for a minimum of five numbers per night in a night game interaction, preferably 10 to 15 is where you kind of should be shooting for. Um, <clears throat> so if you're going out for a night game interaction, try to do it for at least like four hours in the, in the States. Uh, stuff shuts down at two. So try to get out by 10 or so, do from like 10 to two or do from 10.30 to 2.30 where you're kind of dealing with the aftermath of the club closing and people on the street and stuff like that after two. So here's how like a typical night game interaction should go. Now keep in mind, your main goal is to get her to see you again. All right, so that's gonna happen by cementing um, enough value and making a good enough first impression so that, so that she has a desire to see you again. It also has to do, as I will discuss a little bit later in the video, framing the date or as conventionally referred to as the day two so that the girl will be already on board to meet you and you don't have to do all this legwork over text. So the way I typically start off an interaction is I will come up to a girl, I'll see a, a girl that's above the threshold of which I want to bang. Typically I'm going for the hottest ones in the venue first. Um, and then I'm just gonna go straight in. And I always open for the past five years, it's always, hi, can I meet you real quick? I've talked about that in other videos. Very simple. I don't do any openers really besides that unless the girl's tall and I, I make comments about how tall she is or she has a tattoo, I, I make comments about that. Um, but that's just my opener. That's not that relevant to this video. That's what I use. How can I meet you real quick? It's direct, but it's also low pressure because I'm saying real quick. Then I move into talking about how I just moved to the city. And I always say that even if I've been living there for years. And I say, um, I'm going to be DJing at clubs X and Y. And the X and Y are like the two hottest clubs in whatever city, city I'm in. Now, I was a DJ for eight years. Um, so I do have a lot of experience DJing before I got into pickup. But... I don't really do it anymore, and I'm not going to be DJing at those clubs, but it cements an identity, as Mystery talks about in an old school game. Um, saying that I'm a DJ early on, uh, without bragging about it, right? I just moved here because I'm gonna be DJing at clubs X one. So it's, I'm kind of giving a reason why I'm, I'm talking to her, because I'm new in the city, I'm looking to meet new people, blah, blah, blah. But I'm also slipping in this big value thing. So what does that communicate in the identity? I have an adventurous life. I know a lot of people. I have access to a lot of hot girls. Uh, my life is probably more fun than hers. Um, on and on, right? Lots of social proof, lots of cool shit that comes along with that. Now, that's not necessary. That's an optional piece, but keep in mind, I'm doing these short interactions. I'm trying to dump a bunch of value on them, okay? So, okay, so I, I mentioned the DJ thing. Then I say, what do you do in the city, right? I ask like the basic interview questions. What do you do here? Oh, I do blah, blah, blah. Now, I try to isolate usually in the first minute. So a lot of times I will say, oh, come over here, meet my friends, or oh, come over here, let's go to the bar and grab a drink. Um, and then you deal with the objection where she usually says she can't leave her friends, in which case I say, oh, it's just right over there. We're going to be going for like five minutes. It'll just be right there. Like, I'll bring you right back. Friend objects. Oh, it's cool. I'm just nice to meet you. I'm John. I'm just going to bring you right over there. We're going to have a drink real quick and bring you right back. Cool. You'll be able to see us. Now... The reason I bring them to the bar or away from the group is because then it makes escalation and getting into a makeout um, much easier. But let's assume I'm not even trying to take the interaction that far because a lot of my interactions are just like five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. So isolation or not, the next thing I'm gonna do is talk about how we should hang out, All right, Like it's literally that fast. Um, so I'm going to say we should meet up 
during the week, do you like, and then whatever your day activity is, I was doing margaritas for a long time. Do you like margaritas? Yes. Cool. We should meet for margaritas during the week. When are you free? Like it's, it's literally that fast. And like guys would, guys that are watching this or guys that don't have a lot of experience with game. You think like, this seems like it's going to be a flake number. But the thing is, remember what I said in the last video, if you're fucking two girls per week, consistently two new girls per week, 52 weeks in a year, you just did 104 in a year, right? So if I'm meeting 10 to 15 girls when I go out and I'm going out two to three nights a week, now it's 30 to 45 leads for that week. I only need to close two. Keep in mind, there's also random girls I bump into during the day. I'm not doing, I'm not dedicating sessions to day game, but there's random girls I bump into during the day that I'm also opening. Um, and there's also your Tinder and Bumble stuff, right? And seeking arrangement for those of you that lots of you won't be able to, to do that properly. Um, you can also add in strip club leads. Okay. So I go to the strip club sometimes on the off nights and you can get good leads there from hot chicks. All right. But again, the strip club game, hired gun game, seeking arrangement game, those are all very special cases that require a whole uh, change in strategy, which I'm not going to cover in this video. Point is, it's better in my opinion, volume trumps um, everything. Okay, I will repeat that. Volume trumps everything. At the end of the day, this is a numbers game. Okay, it is also a skill game and the skill part is very important. But you need to just put tons of leads into that funnel. Okay, you need to be working tons of these leads. And, I, and in the in the product, the lead machine that I announced in my last video, I go through how to work all these leads. Right. So I give you the optimal strategy from number acquisition to date setup. So I've perfected that part of the funnel so strong that it's worth it for me to just put a bunch of shit in at the top, a whole bunch of leads, and my middle game between the getting the lead and getting them on the date is so strong and I know what to do in all these cases that it's better to just put more leads in. Now that doesn't say that, that I'm not, I'm not trying to say like, um, you just walk up, say you're a DJ and then set up a date and that's it. <clears throat> There's going to be dynamic bantering happening. I'm going to be commenting. If she has like a funny laugh, I'm going to be commenting about her outfit. I'm going to be, uh, twisting things she says into a sexual way, which is how you flirt, right? Making sexual innuendos. But the sexual innuendos and the light physicality, where I'm putting my hand on her back or grabbing one of her hands and let, while we're laughing and stuff like that or poking at her, that stuff is going to cement you as a sexual interest, as a non-platonic interest. If you're keeping all this distance, which I used to do <clears throat> back when I was going from like intermediate to advanced, I would have this distance physical distance between me and the chick and it's just she doesn't get the same intensity like it's it's like you're there to just like fact exchange is like the the term I used to use if you're having like a fact exchange <laughs> where there's this space in between you and you're just like yeah so blah 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 everything's there's no sexuality in the verbals there's no physicality she just starts to see you as maybe like a pushover maybe a beta guy she doesn't see you as like a sexual prospect most of the time. Okay. And I've, I've demonstrated to students on program and I even saw when I was coming up in the game, how starting off with this platonic shit in this space, they start to lose interest after a little bit. And it's, it's a lot harder to inject that physicality and sexuality out of nowhere later, but I've showed guys how you can turn the set completely around and all of a sudden the chick is engaged and now she's really loving it because now she's flirting and they're there to meet dudes that can fuck them and that are going to be alpha. They're not, they don't want to just sit there and have a nice conversation about the weather in the city and all that stuff. Right. You can talk about that shit, but you, it needs to be coming from the frame of like, you're the man and you're going to bang this chick and blah, blah, blah. Right. You're high value. So, um, I say the DJ thing, I'm asking some interview type questions and I'm also dynamically bantering. So, so the big components are, Open, cement your value, and again, just to reiterate the, the, the key principles of opening, strong eye contact, squaring up your body language, speaking loud enough, speaking authoritatively, um, just having being articulate with your facial expressions and your body language, 
right? You're not just like standing there like, hello, I wanted to meet, you know, hey, what's up, I wanted to meet you, what's your name? And you're smiling, right? Okay. So the, the big pieces here in every set, this is kind of a really important video, even though there's like, it doesn't seem like it on the surface, you're going to be running this over and over and over. I talked about how I have 9,700 9, leads in my phone. Okay, a lot of those are night game. I'm just running the same fucking gambit. It's not boring because you're, you're um, getting this dynamic interaction with new personalities, new people every time. But I'm injecting these key pieces that allow the lead to be strong enough so that I have some kind of decent probability to get her to meet up. Okay? So the key pieces are the open. I just talked about the principles of that. Cementing value, which I do through the DJ identity, and I also do through, I talk about travel experiences. Oh, I lived in, you know, and I talk about like the 30 different countries I've, I've lived in and uh, my experiences from those places. You know, I, this is the same type of shit I talk about on, on my dates. I'm just telling a story. It's old school mystery method. It's not canned routines, but it's go-to topics where I'm able to convey value without bragging, without shoving it in their face, without seeming arrogant, okay? Big difference, but also very important. I, this, is, this is how I structure my verbals in the in-person interaction and in the, the dates. Then the other big piece is framing the date. So what that means is, I mentioned earlier, earlier in the video, whatever your date activity is, if it's margaritas, if it's pool, billiards, whatever, do you like such and such? If it's wine, do you like wine? The girl says, yes. Cool, we can split a bottle of wine during the week. Let me grab your number. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, cool. Uh, when are you free this week? Now, I always ask when they're free. I didn't used to do this years back. And what I've found is that if you don't set up the plans, the day, time, and place, or at least the day and the place, um, in event, or day and activity, I should say, in advance, you have a lot of legwork to do over text. Okay, she might not remember who you are, what you talked about. You have to, she's like lost her buying temperature. Okay, like things were all like, the vibe was all like hot and stuff like that. And now the next day, like emotions have died down and it's easier for her to ignore your text opener or ignore your banter on the way to the logistics. And then maybe even ignore your logistics question about when she's free. And then maybe even ignore your date proposal once you find out how this. So you have all this more work to do and all these chances for the set to fall apart when you try to start from scratch over text. So do it in the interaction itself, okay? So in the interaction, do you like wine? Yes, okay, cool, we should um, split a bottle of wine during the week. Here, let me grab your number. Um, you just hand her the, the dial pad, puts it in. Then I say, um, okay, cool. Uh, which days are you free? And you want to meet as soon as possible because leads are going cold over time. And once you get to my level or even anywhere close, you're going to be booking your whole week with dates okay, and, and rotation girls. So if you are at that point, you know, where your schedule is full or even if you work a lot or whatever, you should be consulting your calendar, checking the soonest times that you are free and suggesting a couple options for her. If you're pretty wide open, say it's a Saturday night, you can meet them Sunday. How about we meet tomorrow? Are you free tomorrow? Oh yeah, I guess that could work. What's what's better, afternoon or night? Uh, probably afternoon. Okay, let's plan for like 1 p.m. because we're probably gonna be sleeping in. Ha ha ha. Okay, so let's let's get wine at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, sounds good. Or let's get coffee at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Okay, cool. Oh, I have plan like say she has plans during the day on Sunday. Let's meet Sunday after you're done with your plans. Like maybe after dinner. How about like seven o'clock? Okay, cool. All right, cool. So I'll see you at seven. Um. Then you can either eject, which means leave the set, leave the interaction, or you can build a little more value. Now, now the, 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 the determining factor is basically how crowded is the venue or, or what is the opportunity cost is an economics term. <laughs> Again, not dehumanizing this stuff. It's just, this is the correct way to look at this from a skill perspective. Um, meaning to say, if it's early in the night and there's not many other hot chicks there, you can put in a little more time with her. If it's like 11 or 12 at night and there's a packed venue full of hot chicks, you're gonna to wanna to be moving on. You wanna to try to talk to as many of the hot chicks as you can, okay? If, the, if you open a hot chick and she says, 
Oh, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Okay, have a nice night. I'm not sitting there trying to figure out if this is a lie or not or whatever. Like, guys guys will sit there and badger the girl. Like, do you really have a boyfriend? Are you blah, 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 blah. Either she doesn't like you or she has a boyfriend. Either either way, it's not going anywhere. So, like, or if I'm getting, like, heavy non-compliance. Like, say you open a girl and she's pretending not to hear you. <laughs> Finally, you get her attention. And she's just kind of being a little standoffish. You're not really paying attention. I'll just bounce out. And, and my students and, and guys that wing with me uh, for the first time, they'll see this. And I'm, why would I dump time into that when it's when the odds are low or, or there's it's just too much? Or there's too much of it not being on. If you run into like shit logistics, like say she's like, I have a flight in three hours. Okay, have a good night. I'm not going to sit there and talk to her for half an hour. Why? She's going to stay at the venue for a little bit and go straight to the airport. It's not going to close. And I can't see her later. So <clears throat> just start... I can't go through every case, but just start looking at it like if this isn't going to go anywhere or the or logistics are too bad or she has a boyfriend or she's being too standoffish, or even if her friends are just interfering too much, just boom, move on instantly. Okay, there's plenty of other girls. If the venue is small or you live in a small town or there's not that many people there, you can build that a little bit stronger with the one you were talking to. Okay, and again, it would just be more value stories, more physicality, more flirting might even get into making out, okay? So now, back to that example, you have the number, you've set up the date for the next day on the Sunday, and now, keep in mind, when you go on the date, the logistics are all in your favor. You're meeting near your house or at your house. There's no cock blocks. She has time to spend with you. There's not distractions from the club. Um, you can build more of um, a connection and comfort with her because it's one-on-one, -on -one and it, you know it's just you two. There's not all this other bullshit going on. And... You know, at the venue, maybe you or you or her lives far away from the venue, but now you ha you're booking these dates right near your house. Okay, I talk about that in the Outcome Visitor program, how to run your dates. There's like 10 modules on how to optimize things in your favor. So uh, then I would text her like, hey, it's John from whatever venue. See you tomorrow or see you like tomorrow with Sunday in parentheses at seven or at one for activity for one okay so now the next day uh what's up are you always as crazy as you were last night i open with that a lot from night after night game situations um are you always as crazy as you were last night wink face and then she's either gonna be like lol or like yes i am or like haha what do you mean and then i'll just reply like lol <laughs> lol see you at one lol see you at seven and then i might even like this isn't like fishing for confirmation because you think she's going to flake, but just to get like another confirmation and because you should have a whole bunch of other leads you can schedule in case she flakes and rotation girls. So, so then I'll be like, see you at one comma. Yeah. Question mark. Or see you at one comma. Cool. Question mark. Or see you at one comma. Sound good. Question mark. That's not really like, are we still on for one? Like that, that sentence impl implies you expect her to flake. But if you say, see you at one, comma, cool, or comma, sound good, or comma, yeah, question mark, then it's a lot more, you know, it's, it's, it's more just like, okay, like I'm planning for this, but just, you know, just confirm it again because it's the next day or whatever. So it's not, it's not as big of a deal where it's coming across like you think she's going to flake. And that's it. You do that 10 times, you do that 15 times. And then don't expect all the numbers to reply. Like the next day, like half or more could easily not re never reply to you again. doesn't matter. Okay. Remember you only need to close. And this isn't all racking numbers. I'm just trying to help you optimally convert every hot girl you see into first sex, which is what, what we're here for. <laughs> and then either turning one of them into a girlfriend, if that's your goal, or turning one, or turning them into a rotation girl, if that's your goal, okay? Or turning them into an eventual wife, if that's your goal. It doesn't matter what your goal is. This isn't about, oh, you need to do two a week because you have to do 100 a year. I'm trying to show you that this is the best way, all these different videos I'm putting out, this is the best way to go about putting the most girls through the funnel. And, and from a non-technical explanation, that just means out of all these hot girls that you saw and went to see, I'm teaching you the best way to get the most of them in your life, okay? Which 
can give you big rotations, like what I typically run between six and 12, which can give you the most, the access to the most hot girls, which could allow you to get a nine or 9.5 stunner girlfriend that you have good chemistry with. Okay. If you're just going in and doing like a couple long sets or you're not really cementing that value, you're not injecting that physicality or the sexual verbals, or you're not framing that date correctly, a lot, you end up, a lot of your nights are gonna be wasted. It's gonna be, okay, I went in, I talked to three girls. I think it went okay. I didn't frame any dates. I just said, hey, we should hang out sometime. And I got her number and now she's not replying. Okay, why? It's probably because these are the, the top reasons why. It's probably because you didn't frame the date correctly. It's probably because you didn't bring enough value to the table. Okay, not just through the stories, but again, remember, all this has to flow from the frame that you're a super high value guy, that you're an alpha guy, that you can get any girl you want. And I was explaining my mindsets to some guys yesterday um, in exchange for martial arts training. I had, I had like a top martial artist show me like top three strikes, top three takedowns, top three block checks, top three uh, submissions on the ground, and a bunch of other cool shit in exchange for uh, telling him a lot about game. And I kept telling him like, like the mindset when you're at the nightclub, it's not to go in and try to win the girl. It's not to go in and try to get the girl to like you. Those are all assumed. I assume I got the girl before I approach. That's a key point. I've mentioned this in other videos. You have to assume and believe that you can get any of these girls in the venue, even the tens. Okay. And, and you really have to believe it. So you don't believe it. They're not going to believe it. And it's going to come, it's going to have insidious effects to your body language that you don't believe it's in, it's incongruent. Okay. So you have to have that mindset. Your goals are only to go in there and like show her that you're cool through showing her value, frame things properly to optimize your chances for the meetup, text her properly, which is covered in the lead machine product. Um, but just have this alpha presence you bring to the table. Okay. You're not unsure of yourself. You're not wavering, right? You're not being meek or quiet or passive or any of these weak beta shitty behaviors. Okay. You're in there, you're making shit happen. You're fucking leading the conversation. You're introducing people to people. You're smiling, you're laughing. Nothing's a big deal. These are all the mindsets and things that are going to make her want to respond to your texts. Okay. So it's not, none of these things can exist on their own. It's not, it's not just enough to go in and tell value stories. It's not just enough to go in and frame the date properly for the, for the next meetup. Okay. If you, you, no matter how well you frame it, if you didn't bring that value to the table, you didn't bring that alpha vibe and presence to the table, she's not gonna wanna see you, okay? And if you bring the alpha vibe and presence to the table like a lot of naturals do, but you don't do the logistics part right where you're framing the date, who cares? You can put a natural in and he can have all of these great conversations and he's not gonna bang those girls because he didn't orchestrate things to make it flow that way very smoothly, okay? A lot of naturals, I've even coached some naturals and they can vibe terrifically, right? And they bring that alpha presence and the chicks all love it, but they don't make things happen. They don't know the mechanics of pulling. They don't know the mechanics of framing dates. They don't know the mechanics of lead management and lead working and setting up their days with, with multiple dates. Okay. All those things are very critical. You can't just have the vibe piece like the natural has. You can't just have the, the calculated piece that I offered to the table with the lead working and, and the, the framing and stuff like that. It has to be the whole package. So, I'm trying to make these videos not too long. Um, I think that covers the main basis. A ask questions in the comments um, if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to be putting a website together for my second product because I got a whole bunch of emails where people were like asking all the details. I tried to explain it in my last video uh, verbally, but I'm going to have a website that kind of shows all the different pieces and what you're getting and all that stuff. Um, so just to recap, try to keep your sets like five to 10 minutes in a night game interaction or even less. So a lot of, I've closed a lot of really hot girls where I, I literally just walked up. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. I just moved here. I'm a DJ in clubs X and Y. Um, I'm from New York originally. Oh, cool. Blah, blah. What do you do? Oh, I do this and that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm looking to meet new people in the city. Um, do you like wine? Yeah. Okay, cool. We should meet up for wine during the week. When are you free? Uh, this day and this day. Oh, awesome. Uh, that's really fucking hot dress, by the way. Can I like see the back? Oh shit. And she's like, do you really just do that? Yeah. Like you're fucking hot as shit. Ha ha ha. Right now I've injected some sexuality. I've showcased value. 
with my ID, with my identity as a DJ. I've asked her when she's free. I've framed the meetup. I take her number. Done. Right? Like this isn't. I think a lot of you guys get get like bogged down from all this other bullshit. Again, like most of these coaches and most of these schools that pick up vastly overcomplicate things, vastly focus on lots of shit that doesn't matter, leave out lots of shit that does matter, and they don't tell you how to prioritize and they don't give you any kind of good strategy whatsoever. So you guys go into the interaction trying to win her over, terrible mindset, um, which, you know, she, she senses you're trying to get something as opposed to if you're treating her like you've already banged her and like she's a fuck buddy, Everything is cool and everything is smooth. The escalation is cool. The, the jokes are cool, the sexual jokes. Um, and even if it, it blows up, you don't give a shit, right? Because who cares? Nothing's a big deal. And you guys are in there trying to do push-pull. You're trying to do qualification. You're trying to build investment. All these stupid fucking things, okay? You're trying to be fancy and gimmicky on your opener so that she'll, she'll think it's cool. You're trying to say stupid fucking verbals that sound like cool lines because you think that will give you points to win over a girl that you do not have yet or that you think you're not good enough for yet. You see the problem? You're coming from this low place, you're putting them on a pedestal, you're trying to be fancy, you're trying to do all these little pickup tricks and the chick sees right through all of that and she dismisses you and she probably won't even give you her number and she probably won't even give you that much time of day to be open in the first place or to continue a conversation with you. If it is a number, I talk about this in my five hour video, a lot of times it will be a pity number or because she feels bad because she was put on the spot and she doesn't want to tell you no. And maybe she tried to blow you off and you didn't take the hint. And now you get the, the pity number and you think it's so cool because this is a hot chick and she never responds. Okay, or she uses you for a dinner and then never will fuck you. Okay, which is even worse because it's taking up more of your time and, and money and getting your hopes up and, and you're, then you're getting your spirit crushed when you were never in the running to begin with, okay? So, hope that makes sense. Um, it is, once you start running short sets, but you pack it full of value and you pack it full, like I've done so many sets now, tens of thousands, I don't, I don't, I don't track how many sets I've done. I, ha I have 9,700 leads, <laughs> phone numbers, and almost a thousand closes. But, it's basically like a little comedy bit, right? Like a comedian, he does these bits and it, it puts the top comedians, it puts the audience in hysterics, right? He, he tells a few comedy routines. I'm not saying you should go back to routine game from 2006. <laughs> I'm saying you should have like these go-to topics that are centered around big things of value and it doesn't need to be true, okay? Call that unethical, I don't give a shit. This is about advantage, okay? That you're not gonna be faking your personality indefinitely, okay? And, and that these aren't even really like telling a couple of white lies to give you like a giant value advantage isn't really a big deal in my mind. And I don't think it compromises, you know, showcasing your real personality or any of that shit. Right? Like I have a, a green screen picture of me DJing, DJing at Tomorrowland. So whenever I say that I'm a, I'm a DJ, either on the date or on the in-person set, in-person interaction, if she happens to like electronic music or she thinks it's really cool, then I show her this green screen Photoshop picture of me DJing at Tomorrowland. And I say, yeah, this was two years ago in Belgium. Tomorrowland, for those of you who don't know, is the biggest electronic music event in the world. Now, see, here's the thing. I was a DJ for eight years. I didn't, I DJed a 5,000 person event. That's the biggest one I ever DJed. But Tomorrowland is like tens of thousands of people. And it's like considered like the premier event of the whole world for electronic music. So I will show that. Why would I just show them some bullshit fucking regular club party I DJ at when I could show them this and, and it's a really good Photoshop job with a really good green screen job and it looks really real and almost no one can tell it's fake unless they're like a, a serious serious uh, Photoshop person themselves and even then it's tough why do I do stuff like that is it to try to be cool or be a poser or anything like that no it's for advantage I'm not it's not as cool to show them just me DJing at some fucking small club as it is to show them me playing Tomorrowland, okay? And then you guys are thinking, oh, she's only fucking you because because you're, because she thinks you're a famous DJ. So what? I also am bringing a cool alpha vibe to the table, a cool personality to the table. She's attracted to that as well. This is just giving me extra advantage. 
I met a lot of these top DJs, and they're fucking. A lot of them are, like, are fucking not even cool, but they get laid from hot girls like crazy. Celebrities and um, athletes and all these guys have it on easy mode. Why wouldn't I tap into that? Okay, just tap in, tap into these high value things like Leonardo DiCaprio, even Jonah Hill. Like um, my friend was telling me that Jonah Hill was on some movie set when he was like fat, and he had fucking hot models coming in and out of his trailer all the fucking time. Here's a fat guy. If the girl didn't know who Jonah Hill was, the the fucking celebrity, she wouldn't want to fuck this fat slob, right? <laughs> I'm not saying don't work on yourself and just pretend to be someone you're not. That's not the point. The point is you can use these things for advantage, okay? So I have these go-to things that I use, but I'm also being flirty. I'm also being fun. I'm also... When she tries to like throw shit at me, it just rolls off because nothing's a big deal. Okay, it's not breaking the frame. At no point am I doubting, oh, am I going to actually get this girl? No, of course I am because I do it all the time. Okay, because it's going to be the best sex of her life because it's, I'm going to give her all these awesome experiences that she's never had before. When you are in that position, when you are believing that, okay, and make it a reality too. Don't just fucking be living a, a whole fantasy world. That you so don't put out, be putting on a facade. That's that's what like RFC Tyler does, where everything's just a full facade, and and he's just a low value dude, masquerading. Okay. Don't do that, but it's okay to inject like a little, couple exaggerations or a little couple things to give you a big advantage. I don't want the focus to be like, you're in there lying, you're in there just saying these high value things to be cool. The focus is, bring the alpha vibe, have the alpha mindset make things happen, do the sexuality, the verbals, the physicality, and frame the dates properly, okay? Do that 10 to 15 times, stack your week up with dates, Lead Machine Product tells you how to get those leads into dates, close the dates out, you can have your dream rotation in two to four weeks. It's, really, it's literally that fast. I moved to a new city, within two to four weeks I have more rotation girls I know what to do with in a brand new city very easy once you're once you're running this all correctly and I, am i having these long conversations with these girls no not for the most part if, if i if i run into like a hot one that i particularly like and we did the isolation we're at the bar and she's still being pretty receptive we get no make out then i might go for the poll okay but as i said i I've, I've looked at pulling as being more and more overrated and having more and more downsides to it as time went on okay Maybe you'll pull before there's enough comfort built. Maybe the friends will cock block it after you've dumped all this time into it. Maybe the chick will change her mind after you've dumped all this time into it. Maybe she'll get dragged away or, or, or something will come up or, or whatever it may be. Or she won't get out of the cab when you, when you take her back home. That kind of stuff won't happen on dates. Almost never. There's not going to be drag away scenarios. It's very natural to just go to your place after if you met at a public venue. It's also very easy to, for her to come straight to the house. And, you know, I'll, I'll close on this. <clears throat> when you get all these leads and some of them come straight to the house, them coming to the house is basically like the end state of a pull. A pull is just moving them from a nightclub to your house, which is requires tons of effort because you have to deal with so much shit, with the friends and with the objections and bring them out of the venue. Having them come straight to the house for a date is much easier. And it gets you in that same end spot. Now she's one-on-one -on -one with you at your house. And you're probably going to close her within 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, so put questions down in the comments. And I'm going to keep these videos flowing. I've got a, a lot of good ideas uh, for future videos. And I'm just going to be bringing all the value back. It's, it's, it sucks that I was away for so long. But I'm just going to just come, come back swinging with all the value. And... Uh, yeah, there's, there's still lots more good shit to cover. So I will see you guys um, on the next video. Thank you.